Hello and welcome to our first Code Along lecture of the day. Um, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take a look at what I think is the um, the bit of using Profit which is um, perhaps a little bit painful if you've never used it before um, and that's getting your data into a format suitable for Profit. Now it's not a complex format by any stretch of the imagination um, however, it is different from some of the other time series packages which are available in Python. Um, and so if you're coming from, at it from that sort of angle, it does take a little bit to get your head around. So what we're going to do is develop a function to help us um, with converting from the kind of traditional uh, pandas time series format um, through to a, a slightly different way of looking at our data within and, and labeling our data within, within pandas so it fits into profit. Um, so no profit yet, no profit yet, but we will get there. Okay, so I'm in I'm in Colab. Um, this will run uh, really straightforward in Jupyter as well. Um, it's all we're going to do is we're going to import. Uh, oh, we're going to import the the holy trinity of Python data science: NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Let's bring those in. Oh, of course, it's just checking it can trust me. There we go. No jokes about trust in Google. Right, okay, so we brought in um, pandas. So what we're going to do is we're going to read in some data um, in traditional format to start off with. Um, so that's located in the HSMA GitHub. We've got the URL to it here. We just need to pass that into pandas.readcsv. We pass in the URL. Now we know this is time series data. Uh, it's respiratory admissions by day of year. Um, so we're going to pass the dates in there. Uh, I'm telling you that this is in uh, UK format, so day first equals true. And the index name is date. That's the, the, the column that contains the date is, wait, it's called dates. What a surprise. Um, and our frequency is daily. So we set the frequency of the index to D for daily. Let's run that and we'll take a peek. So what we've got, we've got two columns. Well, we've got one column and one date time index to put it in the correct terminology. So we can see we've got a uh, date time index at the daily level. So it starts off in August 2015 and increments each day. And it's just a number of respiratory admissions um, to a hospital. So let's have a look what that looks like if we plot it. Uh, okay, so I mean, it looks like there isn't much trend in the data. Um, however, it does look like there is um, some sort of annual seasonality, um, so by month of the year. Um, it also looks like um, there may be some spikes in there, maybe not on particular days. Um, but we can't really sell anything about um, day of week at the moment. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a we'll have a look at that later when we fit we fit profit. So what we need to do is we need to change this this data here in this format this this format that we use for example with the naive forecasting into a, a slightly different format so it fits into a profit model. So I think the background to this is that really the um, the team that developed profit. Um, uh, come from a very different background to the traditional time series analysts who developed, um, uh, for example, the type of ARIMA modeling that's built into um, stats models, which is another which is another Python library, or the um, exponential smoothing approaches that are also built into Python. Um, so that's why there's a difference in uh, the input data that needs to go in or the format of it. And, and the other thing is that Profit is quite general, so it works in both um, R and Python. Um, so I guess they were trying to make um, a, a data model which um, could be reflected in, in both of those languages. Okay. Oh gosh, I've got to code this myself live. Well, let's hope I don't make any mistakes. So um, what do we need to do? Okay, so we need to wrangle our data. Um, so we need to um, manipulate it. And we basically need to turn that into a, from a single column into 
um, a data frame with two columns, one of which is labeled DS for the date timestamp, and the other one is labeled Y, which is our Y observations we'll use in training. Um, and it's just letting us know here that the index of our data frame then just becomes an arbitrary value. So a value between zero and the length of the time series. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create um, a uh, variable called profit train. And I'm gonna set that equal to a fresh data frame, pd.data frame. Uh, and in that data frame, I'm going to add ytrain.index. Uh, so all that's doing is it's creating um, a brand new data frame, and that data frame is going to have a single column, and that column is going to be populated with the index of our original training data. And um, so our, the index of our original training data is the date. So we'll take a quick peek of that. So we've ended up with um, a column of dates that's labeled as date. So that's not quite right yet. We'll have to do something about renaming that. And our index is just this arbitrary value of zero, one, two, three, four, and so on to the end of the data set. So we can just have another quick look at that. We can look at the tail. So it goes up to 1094. Okay, so we've got our profit train. Uh, and that contains only our date. So we need to add our Y values to that. Um, so we can do that as follows. So, so to create a new column, we just say profit train, um, open brackets Y. So we're creating a new column called Y equals uh, Y train. And I'm just gonna drop Y train down to a NumPy array. Oh, if I can spell it. To look at the keys. Okay, so that's just that's converting our original data frame into a, um, a NumPy array, array. So that drops our index, and we just get. So maybe I should just show you how that works first. Let's see what we get if I run that. Uh, so we get this. So we just get a column of uh, values in NumPy, just numeric values. Okay, so if I then do that, and we'll have a peek at profit train. So here we go. So we've got now uh, two columns, one of which is our date and one of which is our Y values, but we've got this problem that uh, date is named incorrectly. So with the last step is we just need to update the names of our columns. So that's really easy to do in pandas. So we just say profit underscore train dot columns equals, and we're gonna pass in a Python list of our desired names. And this is an ordered list. Um, so if we then peek at that, oh dear, I'm not very good at typing the same. My hands are very cold. Um, hey. There we go. So there we go. So this is our, this is the data that we want to put into profit. So it's, it's a pandas data frame, uh, just to prove that to you. And profit train. So it's a pandas data frame. Um, and it's shape. It is 1095 by two. So it's 1,095 columns by two columns. And if we contrast that to our Y train, uh, that was 1095 by one column, because remember there, our uh, DS column was actually the date time index of that Y train data frame. And in our profit train data frame, we just have this arbitrary index. Um, so another neat thing that I've done is I've kept my Y train in its original format, because I want to use that with different methods. For example, I may want to pass my Y train to a naive method, so I can then compare the performance of my naive method to my profit method. So we'll need both types of data formatting to do our analysis. Um, so you'll probably end up doing this quite a bit 
um, if you're doing any forecasting. And as an example, that might be, um, you may have a large number of time series that you need to analyze. So let's say you're forecasting um, by condition, or by department, or by service. Um, and so you'll have multiple forecasting models for all of those services. Okay, and you'll need to pre-process the training data for each of them individually. Um, so rather than have this rather clumsy scripting approach that I've used um, to demonstrate how things work, it's a good idea um, to organize this into a reusable function. Uh, so you would then, for example, call this within a loop if you were passing in lots of training data. So, that, so let's code it, let's code it. I've got to do this myself again. I made this hard for myself. Um, so what does it do, this function? So it's just saying it converts a standard pandas uh, date time index data frame for time series into one suitable for profit. We're passing in a pandas data frame called Ytrain, and that's our univariate time series, that's our standard formatted time series data. And we're going to return, again, a pandas data frame, but in profit format. We're gonna return this data in this format. It may not be this particular data set, but it will be a time series in this in this format. So uh, you just need to, in fact, I could probably just copy paste this. And let's type it out again, just so you can join in. Okay, so there's our first step. What we've done there is we have um, created a fresh data frame and we've passed in our date time data. Uh, and now we're going to create our Y data. If I can type, uh, and that equals Y train to numpy. And then we're going to rename so our columns equals DS. And of course, because it's a function, we need to return profit train, okay? So remember what a function is, is it's a piece of reusable code. And that function has a specific purpose. It does one thing and one thing really well. And in this case, all it does is it converts our input, which is our traditional time series format into our output, which is our profit training data format. So you run that, of course, nothing will happen because we're just creating a function. And then to use it, we need to call that function. Um, so we're gonna call um, profit training data, pass in our Y train, and that's gonna return uh, a variable that for, for this instance, I've called YP underscore train. And then we can take a peek of that. Okay, so there, there it is. So once, you, once you've got this function, you can reuse it again and again on different problems. Um, and it will just create your data set for you, ready to go straight into a profit model. So again, just to emphasize, it's useful because we can reuse it. So let's use it with a different data set. Okay, so now we're gonna work with daily level data to do with emergency department reattendances. So we're gonna read them in from the HSMA GitHub using this URL. We're going to um, set that up as a standard data set, Ytrain2. And then we're going to pre-process that and call that output yp underscore train2, just in a few lines of code. So here is the ED reattendance data set in profit format. And we've just done that in a few lines of code. So organizing your analysis by functions will pay dividends the more coding you do. And that's it, okay? So now we've cracked that, we can move on to using profit itself and we'll see how straightforward that is.